Hey everyone, welcome to the Super Draft lineup building show for week 11 of the NFL season. It is week 11, right? Um, I think it is anyway. It's possible. It's possible. Yeah, maybe it's week 10. Maybe it's week 11. I don't know. Either way, we're here to talk some football lineups um, over there on Super Draft. Um, awesome, awesome sponsor of the show. Um, joined by my buddy. It's it, It's been a while since we've talked, Grant. How are you doing? I am doing great. I'm all amped up on caffeine. I've been working all morning. I've been researching. I've been doing stuff. Watched a little bit more Disney. It's it's a great day to be alive. Yeah, uh, you you and your Disney man. Like I'm trying to talk my wife into getting a subscription, but did you see like like 10 million people signed up for it um, within the first 24 hours or whatever? It's insane. Yeah, it was like six bucks. Yeah, it's insane. So um my wife is like we have so many so many streaming things why do we need another one and i'm like well (laughs) yeah it's disney you've literally you're paying six bucks a month for all the marvel movies and all the disney movies i think i i think i sold her because she wants to see that um anna kendrick um christmas movie that's only on disney plus so i think that's how i sold her last night so and Um, what about the mandalorian See, I, we're not Star Wars people. What? Yeah, You're not Star dead Wars to me. people. Devin, I'm signing off. Nah, no problem. Like, we've done the Star Wars, like, the new Star Wars ride at Disney and everything um, a few times now. It's a ton of fun. But, yeah, um, not not Star Wars people. The ride's fun. The new ride's fun. Yeah. Uh-oh. Everyone's entitled to their wrong opinions. As long <laughs> as you don't say that Clone Wars was the best one, then. I guess I can't hate you too much. I like the original three movies. All right, then we're good. Yeah, like I, I can't get into the new stuff. There's too many. I feel like they've done too many, but I like the original three movies. So, dude, you have a newborn. Just sit and watch Star Wars while you're feeding him. Yeah, um, I don't have a boob, and um, that, that means I can't feed him. So, I mean, I'm pr- fairly sure guys of our size both have boobs. Just yeah, to not quite right. work in this mine, same way. mine just doesn't like have milk come out of it, I guess. Yeah, I'm I'm rocking a salt B cup. All right. Well, we have digressed <laughs> so much to start this show. Um, I'm actually shocked that our producer hasn't gotten in my ear yet. But um yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna build some lineups over on Super Draft for week eleven NFL. Um if we have some time at the end, we'll build some basketball lineups and talk about basketball. Um obviously we did the morning grind today. But a lot has changed. We kind of we kind of guessed it. Um, we kind of knew that there was going to be some people out, and you know we we talked about that on the podcast. But um, you know, if you haven't checked out Super Draft, use the promo code Grinders. Uh, that way, you get ten dollars, and you can check them out. They have an eighty thousand dollar red zone for this weekend's NFL slate. Twenty dollar buy in over there. So um, that's one of the tournaments that I like to focus on over there. Didn't get to play Super Draft last weekend, was super busy and just didn't have a chance to play. But, um, you know, getting to get some lineups in over there this week. Also, we're holding another NFL free roll um, for Yahoo. It's a – well, I guess the, the first one was basketball. This one's going to be for football. It's a 150-entry MME free roll. Lineup HQ here on Rotor Grinders is going to be free for Yahoo on Saturday and Sunday, so you can check everything out. Um, it's a $2,500 free roll and, um, you can build 150 lineups and it'd be a ton of fun and, uh, make sure you're checking that out. There's a ton of information on that all over the place. So, um, check it out. Let's get into building this out, Grant. Um, let's do what we normally do. Let's start here at the one to 1.3 range. Is there anybody that's kind of standing out to you here at this price point or multiplier? I mean, I don't hate a few guys who obviously have a really high total in that Dallas game and the Tampa Bay game. Uh, so I'm not going with Lamar Jackson at 1x. Like, I just don't think it's worth it. He does offer a little bit of upside, but not nearly enough for you to get there in all likelihood. So 1x is probably not high enough for him. Where I'm looking is more in this range, Breeze just going up against Tampa Bay, cleared funnel defense. We don't know how much they're going to run, and they are more of a run first team, but going up against Tampa Bay's number one run ranked defense doesn't seem like a great spot to me so i think they're going to end up bearing the ball out a lot more against this terrible Tampa Bay defense breeze hasn't really had a big game all season long but 1.25 x he could still go 400 yards four touchdowns in any given game it's a high total on the game so i really like him probably not going with winston like 
in every single good matchup, like we just don't see him go off from massive scores. He has 132 and 128 so far this year, but he's still going to turn the ball over a few times. I'm guessing he might get a huge passing yardage total, but they're generally not great at passing the ball in the red zone here. So I don't think we're going with him. Dak, like he's been putting up big numbers throughout the season, has been turning the ball over a bit, but consistently up over the 22, 25 point range here. So at 1.25 X multiplier, I don't hate the guys in this range. Yeah, I don't hate these guys. Lamar Lamar Jackson's been absolutely crushing. This is probably like one of the only sites that I end up won't end up playing him this week, but I'm certainly not going to try to talk anybody off of it. Um, I, I think Watson is a better play than Lamar, just getting the 1.2 compared to the 1x. Uh, I really like both of these guys th- in in general. Um, and then just looking at like you said, the rest of this, like Drew Brees, obviously he makes a ton of sense that funnel defense. Um, Dak is a little interesting, but not as much as like as much as I like Drew Brees. Um, Zeke could have a big game in that game, so. Kind of scrolling down here a little bit. Um, we got Josh Allen going up against Miami. There's some potential there. Um, probably more of a tournament play. We know the Philly secondary has been terrible this season. Maybe this is a spot to fire up Tom Brady. Um, and, and then Arizona's defense has been terrible. But the San Francisco defense has been so good. I, I just think Jimmy G's upside and ceiling is a little limited in this spot, even though on paper it looks phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I just – like they're a run first team, they're gonna have a lot of plays. I don't like it's, it's a good spot, but Jimmy G. Like I'd rather take a shot on the one point four to one point six x guys than him. Like his floor is not very high, his ceiling is not terribly high. I just don't think Jimmy G. is really worth it at all, even in a great matchup. I mean, he's not a guy that gets a bunch of bunch of points. Um, so I'm kind of off Jimmy G. Uh, all right, Grant, scrolling down a little bit more here. Um, what else do we like? Uh, let's look in this 1.4 to 1.5 range. Um, Nick Foles coming back from injury. Um, one of my favorite plays is, is in the next range that we're going to talk about. Is there anybody else that you like here in this range? I don't mind Nick Foles. Um, it's not really a great matchup for him going up against Indy. They kind of shut down opposing wide receivers, and I guess – like Foles can get it there, but he's probably not going to do it too much through his wide receiver. So I don't see a huge amount of upside, but he is a good enough passer. Like he can do enough, and there's a high enough multiplier where it could be all right. Uh, Derek Carr going up against Cincinnati, one of the highest totals or the highest implied team total on the entire display there. It's a good matchup versus Cincinnati. There's always a chance that for some reason Cincinnati puts up enough points where they can be passing the ball later on in the game there. So Carr at 1.45 is my, easily my favorite in this range, I think. He just has a bunch of upside and any potential matchup here. And if the game script doesn't go exactly how I think it's going to go, which is them being up and then running the ball later on in the game, and he ends up passing the ball 40 times, then he can easily eclipse 20 points here, which is going to be more than enough to get you there. Yeah, I like Carr as well. Um, all right, Grant, scrolling down here, um, we got Carson Wentz at 1.55. We got – Kyle Allen at 1.55 against Atlanta. Um, you know, Haskins at, at 1.65 and then Finley at 1.7. I, I'll be honest here. I, I love Kyle Allen. He's probably the guy that I'm going to end up playing in cash games on Super Draft this week. At, Atlanta is just terrible in general against the pass. And, you know, he can get there in this game. So I, I like Kyle Allen a lot here getting that 1.55x. Yeah, yeah, he's probably my favorite play on the entire slate and might be my favorite play over on other sites too. It's just a perfect match of going up against Atlanta. He's shown a high volume of targets or a high volume of attempts every single week pretty much. He hasn't had a single week since his first week where he's thrown the ball less than 30 times here. He had 43 last week. It's a great match versus Atlanta. Atlanta can put up a whole lot of points and end up forcing him to throw the ball later on in the game, so... Yeah, Kyle Allen's probably my top guy on Super Draft 2, and he's probably the guy that I'm going to end up using in cash. Just too good of a matchup. Outside of him in this range, I don't mind Jacoby Brissett. We've seen big games out of him a few times this season. If Hilton does end up playing this weekend, that could be a big bump for him. And a matchup versus the Jags, while in the past has been really bad, it's not terrible this year. We've seen him pass the ball 39-plus times a few times this season. We could easily see it again. I mean, everyone's expecting Mac to just run the ball like crazy going up against Jaguars. 
bad run defense, but Brissett can absolutely end up airing the ball out. And then if you really want to take a CBP flyer, I know New England defense has been fantastic all season long, but they really haven't faced great opponents for the most part. Wentz is still a guy that can put up 400 yards in any given matchup. Don't mind him. Probably not taking a shot on Finley, although I don't hate it just because of the massive multiplier. If he ends up just randomly getting a rushing touchdown, he's basically 80% of the way there, 70% of the way there. So if you really want to take a shot on him, go ahead. But yeah, Kyle Allen is probably my favorite guy. Yeah, like uh, obviously Wentz has a, a nice ceiling, so um, I don't mind that. If if Stafford doesn't play, any interest in Driscoll here at 1.7 against Dallas? It's not a horrible play. Like I kind of want to see where the Vegas implied total goes for Detroit here, but he has enough good options in the receiving game here with Galladay, with Marvin Jones, with Hawkinson, where in this offense he can put up a big points total. So I don't hate it. I mean, he obviously passed the ball a ton last week versus Chicago. Wasn't a great matchup, but he ended up putting up 18 points. He had a few rushes, so he can at least get a little bit of a higher floor done with his legs just because he's scrambling. Guy that's moderately inexperienced and moderately athletic. So, yeah, Driscoll at 1.7, I don't mind that. It's just – it's not a great spot. And it has the upside, but if you're doing that, then you're pretty much automatically pairing him with one of his two wide receivers. And Galday is only is sitting at 1.35x multiplier, but Marvin Jones is sitting at 1.5. So, if he goes off for a big game, you can almost guarantee that those guys are just crushing value. So, it's not a bad GPP spot to kind of correlate it. All right, let's move over to running back. Um, I plugged Kyle Allen in. I think we're in agreement early in the week here on Wednesday that we like him. Um, all right, let's look at running back Grant. Uh, obviously, when we're looking at running back, we got um, McCaffrey at the top, Zeke right there with him, Cook, Kamara, Fournette. Um, I-, I think you could play McCaffrey any any week you want. Um, you know, he's averaging what some of these guys are getting in multipliers and uh, even at one X, like he's been on the winning team in, in this big tournament a few times this year, even at one X um, in cash games. Do you take McCaffrey with Allen and take the floor or um, is none of these guys really standing out to you at one to 1. 1.3? Um, I think you still can take McCaffrey. I mean, you're getting a pretty much guaranteed 20, nine points and it's a good match versus Atlanta. So he does have 40 point upside, which is what I'm looking for. And almost every single running back, he's probably the only guy that I'm really considering in the lower range. Like I think you can consider Fournette. I think you can consider Elliot in these, this lower range, but outside of them and maybe Dalvin cook, who's been averaging 21 points a game. So not too far behind McCaffrey. There's really not too many guys I want to go with in the lower range because we have some good spots in the mid and upper range here. So I'm I'm, McCaffrey's fine. He's not great. He's not terrible. Um, But like you're more paying for that floor than anything, because you're not going to get the same floor with guys in the mid range, because they can always flop and they're kind of relying on a touchdown to give them that extra boost and get them into the, into the money. So I, I, I don't, I have no problem playing McCaffrey on some draft any week now, even at one X multiplier. All right, Grant, let's go into the next tier here. Um, are we in a grants that just Josh Jacobs needs to be in your lineups on Super Draft this week? Like, you know, going up here against Cincinnati, this seems like an excellent spot for Josh Jacobs. This team ranks third in fantasy points allowed. They're fourth in DVOA or 29th in DVOA against the run. Like, Josh Jacobs with his workload, at 1.55, is he – am I crazy for thinking he's a cash game lock this week? No, no, it's absolutely not. He is a cash game lock here. He's going up against the worst run defense in the league. Should absolutely go crazy here. Like, he's pretty much a lock on Super Draft and a great play on every single other site. This multiplier is just clearly wrong. And, like, the safety is there. The ceiling is there. Everything's kind of there. And the way the game script works. He should be getting close to 30 rushes this game. And we look over the last five weeks, he's played over 21 in three of those five and averaging around 20 every single matchup here. He's involved in the receiving game. You have everything. You have that 100-yard rushing multiplier that he'll probably end up getting. Yeah, he's pretty much in absolute lock and load here. Um, Outside of him in this range, I think San Francisco handles this game pretty well. I think Coleman's interesting. Um 
nothing like I, I like going down. There's some guys like below this next tier in, in this like 1.7 range that I kind of like. But if Brita is out um, like he's expected to be, I think Telvin Coleman is worth looking at here at 1.55. Yeah, I don't mind that. Like, there's a few guys in this range that I don't really mind. Coleman's a decent one. Mac going up against a bad rush defense. I know he kind of let everyone down last week, but at 1.55, like, he can get 100 yards and a rushing touchdown. That gives him 16 points, or that gives him 18 points there at 1.55x multiplier that he's already up at 27. That's not even including the additional one to two receptions he might get and 10 yards there. And the fact that he can go for 160 yards, 170 yards at any given time. We saw what he did against Los Angeles the first week. Put up 28 points at this kind of multiplier. It's a slate-breaking amount of points. So I like him. You mentioned Coleman. I'm fine with it. He obviously has big touchdown equity. If they're going to be scoring a decent amount in this game, which we've seen San Francisco do on a consistent basis against bad defense, he could end up with another three-touchdown game like we saw earlier in the season against Carolina and put up 38 points there. So you're looking for upside in this range, and he absolutely provides it. Outside of him, Devin Singletary, 1.65, matchup versus Miami, bad against the run, bad against the pass. But, like, if it doesn't turn out the same way it did last time they played, which I don't think it should, then he could potentially be in for a big workload in this game going up against a bad run defense. 1.65x multiplier. He was involved in the receiving game last week could potentially be involved in the receiving game again this week. So I really like him. Yeah, I like him a lot uh, for tournaments as well. Um, I don't know if I'd end up playing Singletary in cash games on this site because of the half-point PPR, but I I do like this spot for him. Um, Kind of scrolling down to this next tier, you know, it's a tough matchup for Carlos Hyde. He's facing Baltimore, but he's at 1.75. Ronald Jones in a tough matchup at 1.8. Jordan Howard in a tough matchup at 1.8. Um, James White against Philly here at 1.8. But I feel like if we just scroll down a little bit more, we get to the second chalk running back and the guy that you should probably play in cash games, and that's Brian Hill. 1.9x multiplier here going up against Carolina. Um, Freeman not expected to play. Smith on the IR. Brian Hill might not be great, but he is set up here for um, a high workload. Yeah, it's all about the workload here and like the matchup going up against Carolina, clear funnel defense. I know that Atlanta absolutely likes to air the ball out, but Carolina is one of the worst teams in the league versus the rush. And so Brian Hill, even if he's just an average running back with a workload he's going to get is likely going to end up with 15 to 20 points here. And that's just a massive amount over on Superdraft at a 1.9x multiplier. He's the chalk guy. He's absolutely the guy outside of Josh Jacobs that I want to use in cash. There's zero question in my mind that he should be in your cash game lines rather than Freeman is out, which it looks like he's going to be. So, yeah, like in the upper tier range, he's by far the best play. If you feel like pivoting off it, I mean, J.D. McKissick with all the injuries there could end up with a bigger role and he can be heavily involved in the receiving game. You mentioned James White. You mentioned Ronald Jones where it's not really the greatest spot in the world here but we just saw uh atlanta a similar type team keep it close against new orleans so if ronald jones gets a touchdown maybe two which he's gotten a touchdown each of the last two weeks and he's the main guy in that offense he can absolutely crush here he was very heavily involved in the receiving game last week being 77 yards and eight touches or eight receptions here so yeah i like ronald jones in this range and i really like brian hill and mckissick's more of a TPP flyer. And if you really want to go balls out and probably end up with like a four in your lineup, Blash is a 2x multiplier. It's gross, but it's a 2x multiplier if he falls into the end zone, which he's gotten a few touchdowns this season. He's obviously the main guy here. He got 20 attempts last week. If he happens to break one off, which is unlikely versus the Buffalo defense, then he can go for a touchdown. Fitzpatrick, he's a big gunslinger. He can air the ball out. He can get them into the red zone, and there's so there's always a chance Balazs does end up with a touchdown. Yeah, and you know Balazs obviously going to get a lot of work. Um, played 88 percent of the snaps last week. Um, I'm with you. I think that he's he's interesting over here where you're getting the multiplier, and when you're just trying to get off of Hill or or play them together, um, it's always nice to get a, a flex running back with a high multiplier um, as well. So. 
I like the McKisnick call, um, you know, Johnson dealing with a concussion. So watch that news. Um, I don't really have anything else. Uh, Balazs was the only other guy that I had noticed. Um, so let's just uh, – let's plug in Hill here, continue to roll with this one. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting when I was looking at this last night because – there are some guys this week, Grant, at the top that I kind of like. Um, you know, obviously Michael Thomas has been one of the most consistent wide receivers this season, and I think you could play him in cash games if you want to. Um, you know, usually I like to take a high multiplier at, at wide receiver, but in cash games, like Michael Thomas right now is just – he's he's money. Um, what are you liking here in this 1 to like 1.4 range? Yeah, it starts off with Michael Thomas. He's getting just a lion's share of the workload in this offense. He's going to end up with 10 targets. He's going to end up with 100 yards. He'll probably end up with a touchdown. He hasn't gotten less than 23 points in the majority of his matchups recently. So he's going to – just the sheer amount of volume in the little two-point multiple or two-point bonus for going over 100 yards definitely puts him in play here. Outside of him, like, honestly, Julio Jones, Hopkins, Goodwin – all very much in play. Not great options. If any of these guys, I'd probably end up going with Hopkins or Goodwin just because we've seen massive ceilings out of them before. Like Cooper averaging 16 points per game. It's still a fine play. Like you say you like some of these guys. I honestly am a little bit more on some of the guys in the 1.5 range than I am here. So, yeah, you mentioned um, Hopkins. I love him here. Um, hopefully – well, depending on Will Fuller. I, I love Hopkins if Fuller's out again. Um, you know, I think Cooper is interesting for tournaments. But the guy that I really like here is Julian Edelman. Like, this secondary has been absolutely terrible for Philly all season. And Edelman's a guy at 1.3 that could go over 100 yards, that can find the end zone multiple times. So, I don't know if I'd play Edelman in cash games over, like, just taking the floor of Michael Thomas with and then getting two multiplier guys in there. But – I think Edelman's a phenomenal tournament play this week. Um, you know, obviously scrolling down here, we talked about Kenny Galladay, about potentially pairing him if you want to go that route. I don't have an issue. If Stafford plays, I think he's interesting. You know, we have Mike Evans at 1.35. Um, and, and then we scroll down. Like, obviously we have a lot of question marks here. Like, you know, is Thielen going to play? If Thielen plays, maybe, you know, Diggs is a guy that we stay off of. DJ Moore is at 1.5x, even though he hasn't been able to find the end zone a ton this season. He, he's still very, very much in play. Um, what you you mentioned that you like some guys in this range. Um, you know, going down to this 1.5 range, who do you like? I mean, let's start it off with uh, DJ Moore. Again, great matchup. He's been getting nine, ten targets for weeks, and. He's been getting some downfield work, so this is a perfect spot going up against Atlanta, who's terrible. Her downfield looks terrible at pass defense, terrible at everything. So he's absolutely a guy with some upside. Michael Gallup, we've seen big games out of him multiple times this year. Didn't do great the last few games. Hasn't had a great catch rate, but the volume was there last week with 10 targets, and we've seen 14 targets out of him already this year. 1.55x multiplier if he gets into the end zone and sees that same volume. then He's in for a massive game going against Detroit with a high total there. DJ Chark just crushes on a weekly basis. We don't exactly know how Foles is going to do in this offense. We don't really have a big sample size of him, but I'd assume that DJ Chark, with how good he's been this year, he'll still see a decent volume of targets in this matchup here, a 1.55x multiplier. He's a guy that's in play. Kirk, really tough matchup here going up against San Francisco, but we've seen how many plays this Arizona offense is going to run. They're likely going to be behind later on in the game. And Kirk is a guy that can go off for a big play against any team. So I like him there. Curtis Samuel, 1.65x multiplier. Same thing as Moore. Same type of target rate in this offense here. Has potential for a big game every single week. And he's a 1.65x multiplier. And then the guy I really like is Calvin Ridley. It's not an easy matchup. But with Hooper out of this offense, with Sanu out of this offense, he could potentially be in for a big game any given week here. He has big red zone equity from what we've seen in the past at certain times. He's probably going to get 10 targets in this game. They're probably going to be throwing later on in the game. He's a guy with immense upside here at 1.65x multiplier. 
Uh, yeah, I like the Ridley call. Um, I don't really have too much to add. You mentioned a lot of the guys that I wanted to mention. Um, I think Cortland Sutton's another guy you can look at. You know, Manny Sanders out now. Um, younger quarterback in there for Denver. Uh, do not mind Sutton. Um, TJ McLaurin is a guy that I love this week in all formats and all sites. Um, I know it's Haskins and he's terrible, but the Jets defense is bad. Uh, they're they're terrible against wide receivers and. Even with Haskins throwing the ball here, you know, they have that Ohio State connection, right? Didn't they? Ohio State, right? Haskins, uh, yeah. I, if I knew college football, then <laughs> I, I, I don't know college I'm football. Like, uh, I'm like, I'm almost positive that's where they both went to school, but I could be wrong. Uh, and, and then we get into, like, Ty- Tyrell Williams, who scored a ton of touchdowns this season going up against Cincinnati. I know we already have Jacobs in here, but I think he's another guy you can look at. Sanu, Parker, um, there's a bunch of options here. You know, you mentioned that you like some of these guys and, you know, when we're scrolling down here, there's a ton of options in this range. Yeah. Tyrell Williams at 1.7. We saw him get a touchdown in every single game he played this season outside of the last two matchups. Hasn't gone well. I don't know why, but I don't care. Going up against Cincinnati, not a good defense against the pass, not a good defense against the run. The game script goes a little bit differently using Derek Carr and pairing with Tyrell Williams, who can go off for a 70-yard play at any given time, is not a bad spot to go. Devontae Parker, it's a tough match, about 1.75x multiplier, and his just probably giant target share in this offense and the game script. Everything kind of points towards him being a possible guy for a big game. Outside of them, like not really a whole lot that I want to go with in this higher range. D.D. Westbrook, if he plays, like we, again, we don't know exactly what Foles is going to do. And he's a little bit worse versus slot wide receivers. So they kind of shut down the outside. And D.D. Westbrook we could be in for a decent game. Like just not a ton outside of that. Like I don't like going that much higher into the range. Like maybe if Driscoll starts again, if I remember correctly, Amendola had a decent target share on this offense. Yeah, had eight targets. Weren't for a whole lot of yards, but a 1.9x multiplier. If he gets into the end zone and has 10 targets, he'd be in for a decent game. All right. Um, really quick, is there anybody else like that you could just throw a shot at here that you don't hate for tournaments um, that we did not talk about? I mean, not really. Like Jeffrey, a 1.9x multiplier, it's a tough matchup. So he can absolutely go for a touchdown. Like we know Jeffrey can go for 70 yards and a touchdown. That's what you're looking at for the 1.9x range. So he's not a terrible play. Jameson Crowder going up against a bad Washington defense. Just the sheer volume he can get there. Hollywood Brown, I guess. Just because we've seen big games out of him this year. 1.6x multipliers a little high considering he can go for 100 yards and a touchdown. All right, I have one more guy I'm going to throw at you, Grant, and I haven't even looked, but I'm guessing he's a 2x multiplier over here. Let's see. He is a 2x multiplier. I like Alan Hearns this week. He's one of the guys that in salary formats that I really like as like a low low own wide receiver. Um, you mentioned Devontae Parker. Getting a tough matchup against White, um, likely going to be shadowed here. Buffalo usually shadows wide receiver ones. And Alan Hearns played 95% of the snaps. He ran the same amount of routes um, that Parker ran last week. So he is clearly the wide receiver, too, and has taken over for Preston Williams ever since he got hurt. So I think with this game being in Miami, we see these two teams probably score a little bit more. Um, and I think that uh, Alan Hearns, a 2x multiplier, is somebody you can look at. Just um, just throwing that one out there. All right, give me – we have Thomas in here now. Uh, give me another wide receiver that you want to put in here. I'm going to throw in McLaurin at 1.65. All right, I'd say throw in DJ Moore just based off of sheer volume. All right. I like it. We don't have McCaffrey in this build. We have Allen, so I like the DJ Moore pairing there. All right, Grant, let's talk tight ends. Um, you know, George Kittle banged up a little bit right now. Um you know, Mark Andrews found the end zone a couple times last season or last week. Um, you know, Travis Kelsey not on the slate. What are you looking at here at tight end? I mean, yeah, Kittle's definitely an option at 1X if he kind of looks healthy. It's going up against Arizona. We've seen what Arizona does all season long. We have Andrews going up against Houston. 
not great versus the tight end. Both of them are fine options, but I like a little bit more in the mid range. Um, Darren Waller going up against Cincinnati. Again, they might be running the ball a whole lot, but he's another guy that you can pair with Carr. There's generally not great options in the tight end position. So he's definitely a guy you can end up going with. But Zach Ertz, not an easy matchup, but still a guy that can get go off for a massive game at any given time. They're probably going to be throwing the ball. The guy I really like, or the two guys I really like, are going to be Olsen going up against Atlanta, who's not been good versus the tight end. Another Carolina guy. I like this entire offense, apparently. Um, guy you can pair with Kyle Allen. Great tight end recently and in the past. And then Jared Cook. Um, going up against one of the best possible matchups you can get for a tight end going up against Tampa Bay, massive target share in there. 31st in points allowed to opposing tight ends. Jared Cook at 1.6 X. We're talking about a guy that can get eight targets in this game. He got 10 targets last week, can get into the end zone and can get 80 plus yards in any given matchup here. We know that they're going to be airing the ball out a whole lot more with his funnel off with his funnel defense. They're going to be passing ball time. Jared Cook might be my favorite tight end on super draft for the slate yeah so i like him a lot as well um i like greg olson i like that call but you know for this build we already have more and allen in there i think the um i think the colts tight ends are both interesting ebron and doyle you know you're flipping a coin to figure out which one is going to find the end zone um you know we look at last week and Ebron had 12 targets. Uh, obviously, uh, Brissett's supposed to be back, and the target share has been pretty close throughout the season with those guys. And, you know, with all these guys out, we did see Ebron's snap count go up um, in, in Week 10. So I think both of them are interesting. You know, they're, they're going to need to throw the ball a little bit in this game, and they just don't really have anybody at this point, Grant. Like, they, you know, me and you could try out and play wide receiver for the Colts right now. Um, that's how bad they're hurting, so. Um, yeah. OJ Howard finally worked out last week. I, Not I might going jump, back to the well. Yeah, Not I was gonna going say jumping well. right, jumping right off. Like we we got our we got our production out of him. Um, with Chris Herndon going to the IR, I think Ryan Griffin is an interesting play here at one point nine. Um, he came on a little bit there right before um Herndon came back, and I think Ryan Griffin's a guy that you know you look at week eight, week nine. He played a ton of snaps. Ran a ton of routes, had plenty of targets. Um, he's another guy that I like here. I think that there's going to be a lot of throwing in this New York Jets Washington game. I hope anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't mind that spot. Another guy, like I already mentioned, uh, I already forgot his name, Hurts. Uh, but Goddard, without Jackson, now they're going to be running more two tight end sets. Knowing New England's been very good versus the tight end, but with running two tight end sets, we could see Goddard do what he was doing prior to Jackson coming back to that. One game, I don't mind him. It's not a terrible spot. He has touchdown equity. He's a good tight end and a 1.9x multiplier. All you need is one catch in the end zone, which is absolutely a possibility with him. Multiplier is definitely a little bit too high there. Um, outside of that, Gasecki, like not a good matchup. Didn't work out great last week, but he still saw six targets. Still can get into the red zone. Still can get a bunch of yards. Still can get seven plus targets a game. So that like a one point nine multiplier. That's what you're looking for. With tight ends. It's just upside with potential end zone equity. Um, and Gusecki, if they're going to be passing later on the game, has it. All right. Um, we both like Jared Cook a lot. Do you prefer like Waller at one point three for the safety, or do you want to go Cook or Ertz here? I mean, I would prefer Waller at 1.3. The problem is the safety isn't necessarily there because they might not be throwing the ball a whole lot. So uh, I'd probably rather go with Kirk, with Cook, but that could just be me. Let's do it. Oh, and we didn't mention, um, you know, just thinking thinking about that Oakland game really quick, we did not mention um, Eifert at 2X against one of the worst teams against tight ends in football. Um, just another, another tournament flyer out there for you, Grant. Um Oh, gosh. And he has had nine points each of the last two weeks. Can't yeah. get into the end zone. Can't destroy my lineups and make me hate my life. But you're right. Yeah, there's a little 2X play out there. Like, you know, they were they were kind of conservative with him at the beginning of the year, but we've we've seen him play a lot more recently. So, um, 
all right, we always leave the flex open. Uh, we did have if, – if you guys want us to build a stack before we move over to NBA, um, fire it up in chat. We had a request to build a Atlanta Carolina stack, which we pretty much did in cash games. But <laughs> let's, um, let's, let's look at this, Grant. Like, do we still go Kyle Allen in this stack, or do you want to build a Matt Ryan one? I, I'd rather go Kyle Allen. Carolina's been fantastic. Um, against the pass so far this season and is shut down opposing wide receivers, which is, I'm guessing, where we end up looking at. So Julio's probably game script proof or everything proof. Um, Ridley is still at a high enough multiplier I can use him, but I don't really see Matt, Matt Ryan going for over 300 yards. So I'd much rather use Kyle Allen here. All right, so here you go. I'm just gonna I'm gonna throw throw a like quick build at you really quick. Um, Kyle Allen, Brian Hill, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley. Yes. <laughs> like, and like again, I, I like when chat participates and you know they give us a stack to build. But this one, this one seems to be pretty simple to build. Like how? I mean, is build? it? Like uh, maybe the car- maybe not. On the Carolina side, I mean, you can use CMC. You can use uh, Olsen. Greg, yeah, Olsen. And on the Atlanta side, like you can go with Brian Hill, you can go with Julio, you can go with Ridley, and that's really it. The Atlanta side is easy. The Carolina side, you have a bunch of different options. So how – okay, so if we're thinking this stack with their multipliers could be pretty popular, how do you want to make it different? Give me, um, give me a running back that you feel like you can make it different with. Running back, so not Jacobs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you want to make it a little bit different, Mixon is a potentially difference maker. Um, what about like a, a Singletary or Bellage or something? Oh, gosh. Yeah, Singletary, absolutely. Bellage. Well, let's go Ronald Jones. 1.8x multiplier. Still don't think he's going to garner that much ownership. I think he's a guy that we can make it a little bit different, but. Yeah, if you want to go more different, then Singletary is probably the way to go. All right, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna for purposes of time and wanting to build some basketball on it. I'm gonna throw in Alan Hearns here. Um, just like I said, I like him a lot. Like, give me, give me a tight end that we can kind of get off of the chalk here. And like, we've already kind of made our lineup so much different that I don't know if you necessarily have to go too crazy here. I mean, we already mentioned Hyper. I don't think Cook's gonna be terribly popular. Oh, no, I got one. Noah Fant, Minnesota, allowing the highest volume of targets to opposing tight ends. Fant with a rookie QB that's relying on him a little bit more. Not really a whole lot on the outside that you can throw to just based off of scarcity of guys to throw to and the way that this game's probably going to turn out. Fant could be in for a big game in a 1.8x multiplier. All right. Um, any other football stuff? We didn't really have a lot in chat about football. Uh, we can kind of switch over to basketball here if you want. Yeah, let's do some basketball. We should probably mention that if you sign up for Super Draft through the RG link and using RG code, and I think you get three months of premium. Is that right? Yeah, three months of Rotogrind is premium. Um, so if you want to get access to all the awesome stuff here at Rotogrinders for NBA, um, you can sign up through super draft using the promo code grinders get your 10 bucks and get three months of roto grinders premium as well a part of that so um you'll get access to the projections and stuff and you'll be able to use all all the tools here um for premium so uh, make sure you're checking them out 